previous two weeks i have worked on adding the plugin logic to web app and adding the advertisements uh, on the api side to get us started so the first one is this pr so this adds the plugin logic to web app uh, i have also attached two videos I've also attached two videos to it. The first one explains uh, from a developer's perspective about the things that you need to get started with this feature and how it is working. And the second is just the overall demo of uh, uh, the basically end user demo. So, so as you can see, uh, where uh, the, uh, this is plugin store of the uh, admin and the uh, this one is uh, the mobile app. So whenever I, I uninstall or uninstall features, it uh, can reflects on this nav bar. So this is the basic demo that I've shown on the video, and I've also added adequate comments uh, in the code explaining things whether where they were required. So th that was the two features, and then uh, uh, as uh, as you remember uh, last week, I shared a video of advertisement explaining what could be the basic idea of it. So I've not received any feedback, so I'm continuing with what, what was my initial idea. So that's why I've started with uh, creating the API. So in this pull request, there are three uh, uh, mutations, create advertisement, delete advertisement, and get advertisement. So those are basically implemented in this pull request, which are almost ready to, to, be, to be merged. So I think, yeah, these were my main tasks. And in the next weeks, I'll be focusing on adding the user interfaces to mobile and admin to make uh, the advertisement work you know, all in all together. Yeah. No, that's really good. I haven't had the time to take a look at the videos because I've been on vacation, but I will uh, I'll see how next week I'll take a, a good look at what you have and then uh, give you some better feedback. But um, I'm glad to see that there's progress on this. I remember at the beginning of GSOC, you, there was concern about the, um, the plugins polling the API server frequently. Yeah. Uh, has that been resolved? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Just a minute. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, so basically I have also explained that in this video that we are using WebSocket instead of the basic uh, REST API request. So what happens is whenever the data is changed on the database related to plugins, it basically sends that amount of data only to all of them and the application checks whether the uh, org id matches with the plugin that is uninstalled for currently and if that is uh, if that is uh, if that is matching then the, then the things will take place so basically uh, previously the requests were like 60 requests per no 60 not 60 it was like 40 requests per second, per minute so that has been reduced to the amount of changes that are happening in plugins which is uh, which is you know very computationally uh, efficient so yeah that problem is solved basically all right, so the next question I have is, can people write plugins and install them like as a package with the API? Is, is that possible with your architecture? Okay, so basically uh, the, the overall idea was plugins would be uh, user and features. Like for example, in future, somebody wants to create a new feature here, which can include some Google Maps or something like that user interface. So what first we has to do is, he has to write that code and get that merged in that application in, in basically the uh, Talawa admin repository. And um, he has to also register that in the API. Uh, there is a JSON file in the API. So basically he has to add the details of uh, what is the name of the plugin and all of that. And then uh, after, you know, then after doing that, then start the applications at the same time, then uh, basically uh, things will work like this. So if there is any new features, for example, Google Maps, uh, like the live location of the church or something like 3D uh, uh, view of that church, then it will also show here as a feature and he can uninstall or install. And basically uh, it will be toggled uh, on the interface according to that, yeah. And also uh, initially I created a video explaining how the plugins will work. So I've made a policy that everything will be in, uh, uh, enabled, installed by default, okay. So which uh, saves us a lot of computational power. So whatever that feature is it will be uh, everything will be installed by default in future if admin wants to change something he has to uninstall them manually so that is not being done automatically and for that i have also created the dialogues after the organization is created to warn admin about you know to handle the feature that he need so yeah that's been done 
Okay, so the uninstall button that I saw there, that's not actually uninstalling, is that what you're saying? Because you said that you have to uninstall manually, but I saw in your videos that there was a button for uninstalling the, the plugins. Uh, yeah, that's right. Is that is that really uninstalling or is that just removing the button? So that basically removes from the user interface. So it sends a signal that for this organization, this feature is no longer required. You can terminate that feature, and this basically this hides it from the from the uh, from the uh, from the end user. Oh, I see. So that's what's basically happening. Yeah. Okay. So. Yes. Ah, yes. All right. So if an organization decides to write their own plugin, they would put the plugin in a predefined location, edit that JSON file that you're talking about, and then restart yeah. and everything would work. Is that JSON file, um, if they were to upgrade Talawa API or Talawa admin, would that file be overwritten and their, therefore their plugin will disappear? Yeah, the, the, the JSON file which indicates which plugins are available. Yeah, I'll show you the file. Right. Actually, okay. the logic behind the file is basically it acts as the default plugins that are. It basically is a, it is a JSON list of default uh, plugin data that is present in the app. Like these are the main features, and if anything is added, that should be registered here. So it is basically our default register. So this is plugin data dot JSON, right? So these are the core features that our app has. If anything new comes, you can also add the details here. Right, but what and I'm yeah, but what I'm yeah. yes, I understand that. But what I'm saying is that if they do an upgrade of the application, this file will be overwritten. Uh, can, can you explain what do you mean by upgrade? Like, are they uh, getting the re new version from GitHub or yeah? Are they yes, for example, yeah, if you got a, 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 a new version, like a point version or something, this file will be overwritten. So what I know happens, like in in on on the Linux side, for example, is that they they usually have an include directory in most of these config directories, and yeah. so users can manually add stuff into that local directory and the application will read stuff from its default location which would be this default file that you have and then also include stuff from that subdirectory which is not a part that would not be overwritten as a part of the um, upgrading of the code or overwriting the code with the latest version and so that yeah. could that could be a way in which you could avoid the problem that I'm talking about yeah, and also uh, one more thing. Uh, this is actually not like considered as from as a database. So basically, whenever the application is started for the very first time, there is no plugin plugin data in the MongoDB, right? So basically, this checks there is no plugin data present. So this is my default data. You can add this data, and uh, whenever the new feature is added, even if like it will be some suppose the maps feature. So suppose new object is created here, which said plugin name maps. And whenever the uh, end users who are using these applications, you know, get, uh, upgrade their versions and they will also uh, get the latest file from this. So this file would also be updated on the database. So which will avoid those in inconsistencies. Oh, I see. Because okay. So the, all right. So this file is loaded into the database and that is the database. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So this is not used for any operation. This is basically just the, for the for the initial registration purpose. Like I don't have any data, so this is the data that I have to refer. Please upload it to database and then I will uh, use it accordingly. Like whatever is uninstalled or installed. Oh, okay, I see. All right. Um, what, what protections do you have to make sure that two plugins with the same name aren't installed, or there's no clashes? Yeah, actually, that was the point because I was uh, differentiating plugins based on their names. So if two plugins are on this are having the same name, then so basically, right, uh, this thing is handled by developers, right? Even if a new feature is created, it will be monitored by some a contributor or maintainer, and then it will be merged in the code. 
So I thought this plugin name would be a, a unique uh, property. So yeah, I, I'm not handling that because of that. So should I add a condition to it? I'm not sure. I just wanted to understand how it works. I, I recognize that you'd have to have a unique name. Um, yeah, unique. Yeah, it's basically recognized why the, the status is recognized by a unique name. Yeah. All right. That's just good to know. Um, if you can put that in the documentation, that would be helpful. Yeah, sure. Basically, I was trying to get a, you know, a complete version. According to everyone's feedback, and then I, I was planning to create the documentation so that I don't have to change it again and again, mm -hmm. and it won't, it won't be outdated as well. That's right. Okay. All right. Thanks. This is really good to see. I'll, like I said, I'll take a closer look at it um, when I'm not on vacation, but this is good. I'm, I'm glad. All right. Thank you very much, Siddharth.